Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and welcome back to this next video and this is the part two on the monocytes and the macrophages. Uh, in the last video uh, we discussed about the origin and development of the monocytes and I've told you that in the bone marrow there are hematopoietic stem cells. The hematopoietic stem cells give rise to the myelite progenitor cells and the myelite progenitor cell that give rise to the uh, monocytes and the uh, other granulocytes like the neutrophils, the basophils, and the uh, eosinophils. Uh, then we talked about the uh, morphology of the uh, monocytes, uh, and I've told you that they are the largest of the uh, peripheral blood cells. Uh, they have uh, abundant blue-gray cytoplasm when you stain them with the uh, right stains or the gemsa stain. And the cytoplasmic vacuoles, they appear as uh, holes in the cytoplasm. And the uh, monocytes, they are extremely motile. So uh, you can see these pseudopods when you talk about the morphology of the monocytes. And the uh, nucleus is actually a uh, kidney bean shaped. Uh, we talked about the types of the monocytes and I've told you you can classify that two ways. So one of the classification classify the monocytes is the classical monocytes and these are the most abundant of the circulating monocytes and uh, they have got this specific uh, surface receptors which is known as the CD14. And the second type that was the non-classical monocytes and they are about 20 to 30 percent of all of the monocytes in circulation and uh, when you compare the classical and the uh, non-classical, the non-classical they are expressing a low level of the CD14 as well as a high level of the CD16 surface markers. Uh, the second way you can classify these monocytes I told you that were uh, the uh, pro-inflammatory monocytes which are involved in the early stages of the inflammation and the uh, anti-inflammatory monocytes involved in the later stages of the inflammation and I've told you that monocytes can be differentiated into the uh, macrophages we call them as the monocyte derived macrophages and they can also be classified and they can also get differentiated into the dendritic cells which are known as the monocyte derived dendritic cells. Uh, then we talk about the mechanism of action and we started our discussion Discussion with the chemotaxis. I've told you that the monocyte they express uh, particular receptors on their surface like the CCR2 receptors. The CCR2 receptor they interact with chemokines like the CCL2 and this particular interaction is actually uh, uh, guiding this uh, the monocytes to the uh, affected tissue. Then we talk about the adhesion and I've told you that on the uh, monocyte you have got these beta 2 integrin associated uh, alpha subunits and on the uh, endothelium you have got the selectins and when they interact with each other the process of the uh, extravasation happens and the monocyte they are going to move from the bloodstream uh, into the uh, tissue. In this particular video, I want to focus on the uh, differentiation, how these uh, monocytes, when they are in the uh, uh, tissue of infection, how they get converted into the uh, macrophages. Now, uh, when the uh, monocytes, they move from the bloodstream into the tissue of infection, they should get differentiated into the macrophages or the dendrotic cells. Now, in this particular video, as we are focusing on the uh, macrophages, so I, only, I will only focus on the differentiation of the monocytes into the macrophages. So how this differentiation that is happening? Now, these monocytes, um, uh, they are uh, producing these uh, specific receptors on their surface, uh, which are known as the CSF1 receptor, which is actually the... Uh, colony stimulating factor one or this is also sometimes known as the uh, mcsf receptors so so far you have seen that these monocytes they are expressing a lot of surface receptors but all of these uh, surface receptors they have got uh, specialized functions uh, so in this particular case when you talk about the differentiation so you are going to use this csf1 or the mcsf receptor of the monocytes now, there are a, a specific uh, class of the chemicals, I would say, which are known as the uh, macrophage colony stimulating factor. And what this uh, uh, macrophage colony stimulating factor do is that when it interacts with this uh, CSF1 receptor, the uh, receptor is going to get activated. Uh, I have a complete course on the uh, cell signaling uh, and I would highly recommend that you study that in order to understand these phenomena, the interaction between the ligand and the receptors and the uh, 
changes in the gene expression that happens during this whole process uh, which actually lead to a particular physiological functions so in this particular case the monocytes they are producing this csf1 receptor so this would be the receptor the ligand in this particular case that is the macrophage colony stimulating factor and when it binds to this particular receptor it leads to the activation of the csf1 receptor when the receptor gets activated uh, signaling a pathway uh, that is happening and in a signaling pathway a cascade of the reactions they are happening which ultimately leads to the changes in the gene expression and when there are changes in the gene expression the monocytes they get converted into the uh, uh, macrophages now how are you going to see that the monocytes they have now been uh, differentiated into the macrophages so a lot of functional changes they are going to happen in response to the changes in the gene expression in the monocytes uh, for example now these monocytes that have been converted into the macrophages so upon differentiation these macrophages are now going to express different surface markers as compared to the monocytes for example the macrophages are now going to express the cd68 and the cd163 which you usually do not see on the uh, monocytes and this uh, cd68 and cd163 they are associated with the uh, phagocytic and the tissue resident functions of the uh, macrophages so this is one way you can tell that if they are expressing now the cd68 and the cd163 the monocytes they have been converted into the uh, macrophages secondly uh, differentiated macrophages they acquire enhanced phagocytic capabilities and they are equipped to uh, ingest and degrade pathogens the dead cells and the uh, debris uh, the macrophages they are responsible for the production of a range of the cytokines and the growth factors and the cytokines and the growth factors they contribute to the inflammation tissue repair and modulation of the immune response so these are some of the functional changes that are happening when you are converting the monocytes into the macrophages and you can use these functional changes to differentiate between the monocytes and the macrophages now uh, if you uh, talk about these macrophages now uh, these uh, macrophages they are producing uh, a lot of surface receptors like the toll like receptors and the scavenger receptors and these receptors they are very important in neutralizing the bacteria for example uh, because these uh, bacteria they are producing uh, specific receptors i would say on their surface which are known as the pathogen associated molecular patterns so the uh, macrophages they are producing these toll like receptors and the scavenging receptors the bacteria for example they are producing the pathogen associated molecular patterns one of the example in this particular case of the pamps that will be the liposaccharide on the bacteria so the liposaccharide on the bacteria that would is that is going to be recognized by these toll like receptors and when they are uh, recognized when the toll like receptors they recognize for example the lps on the bacteria that is going for the uh, phagocytosis of this bacteria as you will see in the uh, next slide uh, there is another term used uh, one is these uh, pamps the pathogen associated molecular patterns uh, which are actually part of the uh, pathogens but there is another term which is known as the damage associated molecular patterns and these are damps they are actually the indigenous harmful molecules that are released from the damage or the dying cells and they are responsible for the activation of the innate immune system by interacting with another class of the receptors which are known as the uh, pathogen uh, recognition uh, the pattern recognition receptors so this is something you need to differentiate the pamps they are present on the live pathogenic bacteria you can see and they are going to be uh, get uh, recognized by these toll like receptors or the scavenger receptors the damage associated molecular patterns you are talking about the damage or the dying cells and they are actually recognized by these uh, pattern recognition receptors and of course these prrs and these toll like receptors and these scavenging receptors they are all present on the surface of the uh, macrophages so the macrophages is doing a lot of stuff that is helping in the neutralization of the live pathogen pathogens as well as the uh, uh, damps from the body uh 
the uh, as I've told you, these macrophages they are uh, playing their role by the process of the uh, uh, phagocytosis. So how this phagocytosis that is happening? For example, if this is a bacterium, as I've told you, if this is a gram-negative bacteria, it is going to express the uh, LPS on its surface. These are the receptors, for example, these are the toll-like receptors. So the toll-like receptors are going to interact with the LPS of this bacterium. And when that interact uh, with each other, this is going to go for the process of the uh, uh, endocytosis. So here the process of the phagocytosis have already started. The bacterium that has been endocytosed by the uh, macrophages. Now this particular one, uh, the uh, bacteria, along with part of the membrane, this is usually referred to as the uh, phagosome. So the bacteria plus part of the membrane, they are referred to as the phagosome. Now these phagosomes, they interact with the uh, lysosomes which are present in the <coughs> excuse me uh, these phagosomes they are going to interact with these uh, lysosomes and when they interact with each other the structure that is formed that is known as the phagolysosome and as you can see over here the phagolysosome actually contain the phagosome plus the uh, lysosome they have combined with each other and in this is in the phagolysosomes that the bacteria that is neutralized and that is converted into the soluble debris and this particular these soluble debris then they are excluded from the macrophages during the process of the exocytosis and these soluble debris they are then uh, removed from the body uh, these pathogens, they are degraded, as I've told you, by the enzymes that are present in the uh, macrophages as well as by the uh, reactive oxygen species. Now, another important thing the macrophages, they are doing, that is antigen presentation. And this uh, antigen presentation, uh, the macrophages, they play a crucial role in linking the innate and the, uh, innate, uh, and the adaptive immunity through the antigen presentation. Now, how this is happening, the uh, macrophages, uh, they process the antigens from the pathogens, as you have seen in the last uh, slide. So after the uh, processing of the antigens, uh, they present them on the major histocompatibility complex molecules. So the macrophages, they are going to express these uh, MHC molecules on their surface, and they utilize these MHC molecules on their surface to attract the uh, cells of the adapt adaptive immune system, like the T cells, uh, for the clearance of the pathogens from the body. Now, these major histocompatibility complex, they are actually uh, a group of genes that code for proteins found on the surface of cells, and that help the immune system uh, recognize and neutralize the uh, foreign substances. This is like uh, one of the, um, there are two major classes of the MHC. One is known as the MHC class one, and that one is known as the uh, MHC class two. And both of them, they are very important in the uh, antigen presentation. And they are also very important in the clearance of the pathogens from the body. I'm not going into the detail of the MHC class one and MHC class two. Uh, in this particular video, we will discuss that in detail when we talk about the uh, adaptive immune system and when we will discuss about the uh, T and the B cells. So this is an uh, overview of the uh, monocytes. They get converted into the macrophages, how the macrophages uh, help uh, do in the process of the phagocytosis or you can say the macrophages use their phagocytosis process to uh, clear the pathogens from the body and these macrophages are, are also very important in the antigen presentations to the cells of the uh, adaptive immune system. Uh, we will continue the uh, discussion in the uh, next video.